Today, I'd like to look at methods of focusing our cameras when shooting nightscape images. We've all been in that situation where we spend a night out shooting the stars only to get home and look at our images on a computer screen and be disappointed to find them out of focus. I often say to people that focusing is the first skill that needs to be learned when shooting at night. This raises an interesting point. We get so used to relying on the automatic features of our cameras that we don't develop the skills necessary to get great shots without them. The aim of this video is to give you some hard and fast rules to get accurate focus in the dark when you can't rely on any of the auto features built into the camera. When we have a good understanding of what our camera can do and how to use it, we can use this knowledge to make our job easier. The first thing people have to consider when shooting the night sky is how to establish infinity focus. Infinity focus essentially means that things at a great distance from the camera are in sharp focus. Obviously, the stars will be at infinity focus. This sounds pretty simple because when we take our daytime landscape shots, all we do is auto focus on something a long way away, lock down the focus ring. But remember, we'll be shooting at night and we've already established that autofocus won't be of any use to us. So, what do we do? A lot of people will advocate setting the focus in the daytime and not moving the focus ring until you go out shooting at night. But I find that quite difficult when traveling, putting equipment in and out of camera bags, etc. Sure, you can tape it down, but I wanna show you another way. This video will demonstrate two very accurate methods of attaining focus in the dark using manual focus with pretty much any DSLR or mirrorless camera. The first method is using live view focusing, and the second is by using a depth of field table. And I wanna show you how to use these techniques together. So here we are in a typical night shooting scenario. I'm wanting to shoot the Milky Way over a shed and cubby house. My aim is to include both the foreground details as well as the distant night sky in the shot. I'll be using a Nikon D750 with the Nikon 20mm f1.8 lens for this demonstration, but the same rules apply to any camera and lens combination, as long as you can enable a live view screen on the back of the camera. There's a lot of theory out there about how to obtain infinity focus, and I guess we all have our favourite methods, but the fact is lots of people struggle with this every time they go out to shoot. My particular style of night photography relies heavily on images being in crisp focus. I'll often use focus stacking techniques to obtain that by blending foreground and background images together. But today, I'm gonna to keep it really simple. So here we go. I'll show you how to find infinity focus using the live view mode on the rear LCD screen. Firstly, I'll see if I can find any bright stars in the sky and point the camera in that direction. Then. I'll make sure the autofocus is turned off. Next, I'll enable live view on the rear screen. Some lenses have distance markings on the lens itself, like this one. I've found that the markings on many lenses are not accurate, and simply setting the focus using these indicators can lead to out of focus images. But at the very least, the markings on the lens will get us in the ballpark. The method of live view focusing goes like this. Open up the aperture to its widest. This lens goes to f1.8, but for this demonstration, I'll set it to f2.8. Set the shutter speed to 30 seconds. Also set the ISO to a high number, perhaps 3200 or even 6400. What we're doing here is giving the camera and lens the greatest light gathering opportunity. We probably won't be using these settings when taking the actual shot, but it helps a lot at this stage to see the faint stars. Point to a bright grouping of stars. Use the digital zoom function of the live view screen to get a closer view of the stars. These are shown as plus and minus symbols on the back of the camera. Gently turn the focus ring on the lens to obtain a sharp star. Now, this is a prime lens, but when using a zoom lens, be very careful not to move the lens zoom ring. Any reference to zooming in live view is always talking about digital zoom. You'll find that turning the focus ring back and forth past the point of focus helps us see the difference. The stars will become small dots when in focus, and as we turn the focus ring too far, we see that the stars begin to enlarge and blur. Something I've picked up by doing this for many years is that the key to getting good focus using this live view method is to concentrate on the dimmer stars on the screen. When they come into focus and become sharp, you'll know you've nailed the focus. 
Once we obtain correct focus, we then use the buttons on the back of the camera to zoom back out to a normal view. From there, we go through our normal practice of framing up the shot and setting our aperture, shutter speed and ISO to take the shot. As you can see, because of its wide aperture, this lens makes it really easy to see the stars in the live view screen. Because it's so easy to see the stars, it becomes a lot easier to focus on them. Not all camera and lens combinations are this efficient. I've discovered over the journey that as photographers can be an impatient bunch and we're always looking for the easy option. Well, I'm glad you're watching because one of my favourite sayings is that my goal is to make complicated photography principles seem simple. As much as we don't like to hear it, mathematics is the glue that holds the photography world together. So, what has this to do with finding focus on our camera? I'd like to introduce you to a depth of field table. This is basically a chart showing where the focus point will be for any given lens, focal length and aperture. I like to explain it like this. For every camera and lens combination, there is a distance point at which everything past that point is in focus. In simple terms, that is the infinity focus point. What if I could say to you that if I was to focus on the fence over there or a tree in a paddock, I'd have infinity focus. Let me show you what I mean. A depth of field table gives us a list of every camera and lens combination. And the good part is that the maths is worked out for us to find where the infinity focus point is. The theory is that if we were to focus anywhere beyond that point, we would indeed have infinity focus. So let's have a look and see how it works. I said at the beginning that we'll be using a combination of the live view method and a depth of field table. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to look at my table and see where I should focus to get infinity. Now, maybe I'm more of a creative than a scientist, but I like to build into the calculation a safety margin, just in case. When looking at the chart for the combination of D750 and 20mm lens, I can see that if I want to use an aperture of f2.2, which I can with this particular lens, I should be able to focus on something at 6 metres distance to find infinity. Now, I don't expect you to believe me, so I'm going to give it a shot and see if it works. I'm going to step out to about 10 metres, even though the chart said 6 metres. Remember, I said I like to build in a safety factor. Then I'm going to find something to focus on. Take a shot and see if the stars are in focus. OK, let's do it. I'm going to light up this cubby house with my torch and focus on it as it's about at the 10 metre mark from the camera. Next, I'll repeat the process I explained before using the live view screen to obtain focus. This is certainly a lot easier to do than trying to get stars to show in the screen, especially with the smaller sensor cameras with kit lenses. Once I've got focus, I'll enter my preferred exposure settings and take the shot. OK, so let's see if this shot looks good. I'm really impressed with the results I have here. I can zoom right in on the stars on the back of the screen and they look exactly the same as using the original live view method. Fantastic, it works. Now, I don't want you to just believe me. I want you to get out there and give it a try. There are plenty of depth of field tables available online. The one I used here tonight was part of the PhotoPills package, which is free to desktop and available for a cost to mobiles and tablets. I hope this video has been helpful to you, especially if you've been struggling to find focus with more budget equipment. The principles are the same no matter what brand of camera you use. Now, the live view method works really well if you have enough brightness in your sensor and lens combination. I've been using it for years, but I suggest you have a look at the chart to see if it works for you. I reckon you'll be pleasantly surprised. So, just to summarise, make sure the camera is set to manual focus. Open up the aperture on the lens, increase shutter speed to about 30 seconds, set ISO high to about 3200 or even 6400 ISO. Use the live view screen to focus on bright stars. Zoom in on the screen using the plus and minus buttons. Readjust your exposure settings to suit and take the shot. If you're struggling to find any stars in the live view screen, open up your depth of field chart and line up the relevant camera and lens information to get the infinity focus distance. Remember to factor in a bit more distance just to be sure. Focus on that and take the shot. I think the foreground is equally important in creating awesome images, so don't forget your framing and lighting. 
Shooting nightscape images is never easy, especially when we're continually frustrated with out of focus photos. Hopefully this video is a starting point to that being a thing of the past. Well, until next time, thanks so much for watching.